Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today, we gather to celebrate Jesus' ministry to healing and his proclamation of the good news of the kingdom of God on this, the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider this morning is Father Kevin Kenny. At the sign of peace, a simple gesture or a bow is always appropriate. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Father. As we gather together here in person, television broadcast, and live stream, we gather to give thanks and praise to God and for the call that we have in our lives to live the gospel message. So let us take a moment seeking God's mercy and forgiveness, knowing of the healing and that peace that we can find. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of a hireling's? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast. 
for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went out to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. For many of us, and at times, in our lives, like Job, we might see life as a drudgery. And we just do the same thing over. There's so many issues and problems in the world today, and how can we help solve that? How can we make a difference? But yet we realize that we are just a little drop in the midst of the big sea. But yet, as we go through life, the challenges that we meet, 
are not only ours, but come in a greater community. That as a church, as an archdiocese, that we continue to strive to move forward, that we continue to strive to work the gospel, knowing that we hear the gospel, we take the gospel in, we reflect upon it, and then we are called to live it. And how do we live the gospel that we hear each and every week? How do we take it into our lives and recognize that you and I are called to follow Jesus in a way that Jesus, when he ascended to heaven, says, now you go and do as I did. As we go out to heal the sick, as we go out to expel demons, you and, not, you and I may not know what goes on behind the scenes, but yet in this archdiocese so much happens. So much happens because we believe in the gospel, and we need to continue to bring the gospel to so many, to so many who no longer want to come to the doors for healing, no, want, no longer want to seek who Jesus is. So now we need to go out. And how do we do that? We do that in many different ways in the ministries that the Archdiocese brings to us. We do it locally in the parish, but yet in the local church as well. So many different ministries reach out for healing, reach out to educate, reach out to show compassion, reach out to the ill, those imprisoned. So many ministries reach in so many different areas to promote life, to welcome the stranger, to incorporate so many different cultures into our local church. And we do that, why? Because that is the church. That is what we are called to. And when we put faith into action, you and I recognize that, yes, the gospel has life. It just doesn't stay within us. But you and I and so many others within the Archdiocese continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, continue to invite others to receive that healing, to be released of the demons of today's world, and to know that they are loved, that know that they are cared about. And so today we have that special invitation from Archbishop Hebda for the Catholic Service Appeal, a way that we can reach out and help so many others in the Archdiocese. The invitation will come to each and every one of us. And whatever it is that we can do in prayer and financial support or in actual giving, we do. Why? Because we have recognized the call from the Gospels to put faith, our faith, into action at home, at church, in the community, in the world. So let us take a moment to listen to the invitation from Archbishop Hebner. Hello, I'm Archbishop Bernard Hebta. Over the years, you have seen and heard about the many things that the Catholic Services Appeal Foundation, or CSAF, has done in collecting our gifts and distributing them where there is great need. Sometimes it can be daunting to think about how to accomplish such a huge task. But with God's help and guidance, CSAF has done just that. Just last year, we collected almost $8 million. For that, I am so thankful. As you may have heard, the CSAF voted to pass the baton to the Archdiocese as of January 1st of this year, and I am now responsible for this appeal. Though the name and structure will be changing, the mission remains the same. We continue to focus on the same principles that we always have and that you have always supported, ultimately to make Jesus known and loved. Some of the things that we continue to support our hospital chaplains, an opportunity for those that are sick or dying to find comfort through the sacramental ministry of a priest, Catholic education, opportunities for us to grow our church through our children and give them the gift of a quality Catholic education, strengthening families. The Office of Marriage, Family and Youth is a resource for all that promotes evangelization and helps to create a culture of life through programs that support the vocation of marriage, the single state, and outreach to youth and young adults. Giving is faith in action. It is trusting that God, who has already provided for us, will continue to do so. And that we, in confidence, can trust that what He has entrusted us with will flourish when we can let go of it and give to those in need. 
we cannot just call ourselves the church, we need to be the church. And as a united body of Christ, I humbly ask again for your participation and your generosity. I am blessed to shepherd an archdiocese of phenomenal generosity. I see the beauty of faith in action every day from your prayers, your actions and words and deeds to each other and to those in need. We know that the Holy Spirit works in and through our hearts, and I am ever so grateful. I look forward with joyful hope that from your participation and support of our appeal, God may richly bless you and your family, for giving is faith in action. In order to do that, there are three ways to give. First, place your donation in the envelope for the collection today. Second, mail a check to Catholic Services Appeal. Or thirdly, give online at archspm.org or by scanning the QR code. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Please be assured of my prayers. I forgot to invite you all to take out your phones before this message. The only time you can use your phones in church is to snap a photo of the QR code. But as Archbishop Hebnett has invited us to participate in the Catholic Services Appeal, the little bit that we can do is our faith in action, allowing so many ministers, so many ministries, so many people in the Archdiocese to feel the effect of our love, of putting our faith into action through the love of the gospel. There are also copies of the QR code in the pews and envelopes at the end of the pew as well that you can use. And as Jesus went off to pray before the disciples found him, you can take time this week or next to pray about how you can best give to the Catholic Service Appeal. Take an envelope home with you, bring it in next week, or as Archbishop Hebda invited us to mail it in or go to the website of the Archdiocese or St. Olaf, and you will find the QR code or a link to directly give to the Catholic Services Appeal. This year, again, our goal for St. Olaf is a little over $78,000 to raise as a community to help in the overall Archdiocese. We are a very generous community, and last year we met 121% of our goal. So we even give more in this sense of being able to reach out to so many, as we do here locally, even ourselves, reaching so many who come through our doors. But we can make a greater effect on the Archdiocese as all are invited in the Archdiocese this weekend to do so. So take some time, and if you're ready today to use an envelope, if you received it in the mail, many who have given in the past received a packet in the mail this past week, drop it in the basket and we will forward it on, put it in the mail, and it will arrive at the Catholic Services Appeal, or go online and make your donation in the next couple of weeks. Truly, we appreciate all that everyone does within the Archdiocese and the ministries that the Catholic Service Appeal serves are truly ministries that reach those on the fringes, those in the heart of our Archdiocese, and those who truly have a desire to come to know and love Jesus Christ. And together, let us stand to proclaim that of which we do believe. I believe in one God. Thank you. 
Our God is present to us and heals us. Therefore, let us speak our prayers of the need with confidence. That all members of the church may be the healing presence of Christ for all they meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peoples of the world choose to be grasped by a God who is personally present and caring. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For couples celebrating the sacrament of matrimony this weekend, especially Valerie Lick and Benjamin Frost, may the Holy Spirit guide them to serve the church as they journey together into the heart of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the disciples of Jesus gathered here today, may we proclaim more fully the good news through deeper encounters with Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May those in need of healing encounter Jesus' saving power, especially the people who are named in our prayer ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, May all the faithful departed share in the fullness of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. O healing God, you include all in your kingdom. Hear our prayers of need that we might better serve you in one another. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Olaf, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a humble sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lent is fast approaching, and as part of the Archdiocesan Synod process, each of the parishes are invited to form a small faith-sharing groups. So we are in the process of forming those small faith-sharing groups. You, are, you may register on the parish website or pick up a paper registration form in the information racks. It was one of the dreams of Archbishop Hebdo when he wrote his pastoral letter a couple years ago that all members of the Archdiocese would be part of a small group. So part of the small group faith sharing will be based on that pastoral letter that Archbishop Hebda wrote for us. And there are a variety of days and times available. The information is in the bulletin. Yet a new time has been set for Sunday mornings at 11.15 as well. There is no charge to become a member of the small faith groups. All are welcome. So please look at the information in the bulletin or in the racks in the vestibule of the church or on the information table where there is a registration form as well to sign up for a small group. And thankfully, it is warmer this weekend, but not yet warm enough. We still in Samaritan Ministries are in need of winter gear, especially coats for adults. We welcome new or gently used items. We thank you for your support. And again, as we heard in the homily time about the Catholic Services Appeal, there are envelopes in the pews for you to take with you if you wish today, if you didn't receive one in the mail. Or a copy of the QR code is there in the pew as well, or out in the vestibule. Please pray how you may be a part of that, that as we all take part in what this Archdiocese does, that we may be generous in our giving, because we have always received so much from the Church and this Archdiocese, and from the great love that Jesus has for us all. You're all invited to join us today for coffee and donuts in the gathering room after Mass. And we thank you all for joining us here, those of you here present, those joining us by live stream and our television broadcasts. May you all be safe this week. May we find that true love of Jesus in our hearts, and may we not be afraid to share that with all whom we meet. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thanks.